Hey again everybody, um, yesterday I shared a video about making an incubator using perlite as a hatching substrate. Um, some people uh, really like the perlite and other people don't really care for it so I'd like to give you an alternative to that. Um, some of the reasons people don't really care for perlite is that you know in an incubator you want to keep it as moist as possible without getting overly damp uh, and when you have perlite it's kind of hard to tell like exactly how damp it is just by looking at it you know this is perlite dry this is perlite wet and they look almost the same the dry just moves a little bit more freely the moist you actually have to stick your finger in there or invest in a hygrometer which is a humidity gauge um, to put inside of your incubator um, and some people just don't trust themselves to know enough you know just by touching it how moist it is and a lot of people don't like sticking their hands in the incubator any more often than you have to and that's probably a pretty good policy um, so instead of the perlite you can look into using um, aquatic planting soil or aquatic pond soil uh, this stuff is pretty cool. It's um, just diatomaceous earth. It's kind of like a clay substance and it's really porous so it holds a lot of water and that makes it pretty much the ideal um, incubating material. It's used in like koi ponds and it provides a good root system or a place to, for aquatic plants to put their roots um, for koi fish to lay their eggs um, you can find it at like plant nurseries if you're you have a good local plant nursery or some home improvement stores carry it and the cool thing about that is that this is what it looks like when it's dry but that's what it looks like when it's wet and you can really tell the difference just by looking at it whether or not it's got enough moisture in it and that's a big bonus for a lot of people. They don't have to mess with the lid. They don't have to stick their fingers in it. It's not so much of a, an issue when you have an incubator that's completely closed and that you only vent once a week like I tend to do. But if you prefer to have an incubator with little holes in it, um, air does escape and you'll want to be adding water back into it and going by sight you either got the white looking stuff without much water in it or you've got the nice like golden brown red color of the stuff with enough water in it um, another difference between the aquatic pond soil and the perlite is that with perlite you don't want to reuse this every year you've got to throw that stuff away like probably you want to get new stuff in there after every hatching almost because once that little egg like opens up in there there's going to be egg goo in there and um, that's potential for mold growth so you want to clean that stuff out you want to get rid of it after you've had an egg or two hatch in there it gets pretty nasty and it gets discolored looking mildewy kind of at room temperature which you want to be keeping these eggs at um, not really an easy way to clean perlite you just dump it so it's kind of wasteful you go through you could go through a lot every year if you're raising a lot of eggs um, with the pond soil you can just boil it up after you've been using it and reuse it it's really sturdy um, it doesn't really break down so it's not wasteful you can just reuse it I mean get a bag like this you could even share with some of your friends if they're also raising crested geckos um, there is a more costly initial investment a bag about this big costs about twelve to fifteen dollars depending on where you buy it and a bag about the same size of perlite only runs you about three or four dollars but if you can reuse something you know why not go for it The only initial drawback with the aquatic pond soil is that it starts out pretty dusty. So all you have to do to get it ready to put in your incubator, you can 
and put it in a sieve in a bigger bowl like that and run water over it. I don't know if the camera's picking up that sound. There's like a hissing sound. But that's just all of the little pores in the in the stone picking up the water, sucking it in. And the water in the bowl is looking pretty murky. It's pretty cloudy. And it just shows you there's a lot of dust that comes off of it. So all you have to do is run water over it for a while. Let it drip until it's not dripping anymore and then you can just put it right into your incubator just like you would do with the perlite about the same level and then you just lay the eggs right on top of the aquatic pond soil just like you would have with the perlite so anyway here are two completed incubators the one on the left is the aquatic pond soil and the one on the right is the perlite all you have to do Stick your eggs in either substance. You just lay the eggs right on top of the aquatic pond soil, just like you do with the perlite. Just put a lid on it, on either one, and you just set them somewhere where you can keep an eye on them occasionally. Um, just try to put them where you won't be bumping into them or where your evil cats will not knock them over. <laughs>